A key part of the defense was the child psychiatrist, Frederick Wortham, who gave two days' worth of testimony. During this time, he explored the religious obsession of Albert Fish, as well as the primary focus of the story of Abraham and his son. As in the biblical tale, Fish believed that sacrificing a child would provide atonement for his sins. Due to the lack of divine intervention during the murder of children, Fish took his actions to be correct in the eyes of God. Wortham even suggested that in the case of Grace Budd, Fish had seen his victim not as a woman, but as a young boy. He also commented on the cannibalism, linking it to the Christian practice of communion. After a lengthy question regarding Fish's entire life up to that point, the doctor surmised his evaluation by simply suggesting that Albert Fish, quote, is insane, unquote. The trial was perhaps one of the first to make extensive use of the still nascent science of psychotherapy and psychiatry. Many noted professors and doctors were called to the stand to give their verdict on Fish and whether he was truly insane or simply deluded. After the ten days of cross-examination and medical hearing, the court found Albert Fish to be both sane and guilty. He would receive the death sentence. The sentence was carried out on January 16, 1936, in the electric chair at Sing Sing Prison. On the night before he died, Fish drafted one final letter. He handed several sheets of paper to his lawyer the next day and told him they were his final words and were to be distributed to the press. The day after the execution, the lawyer revealed his possession of the letters to the press but informed them that he would not reveal the contents to anyone, claiming them to be, quote, the most filthy string of obscenities that he had ever read, unquote. After many years of murdering and eating young boys and other people, the serial killer known as Albert Fish was put to death. His last act of obscenity destroyed.